Hello guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Jack Mate Podcast. It's a Christmas special somehow, and today I am joined by my comedy hero, Mr. Tom Norris. How you doing, Tom? I'm good, mate. But I'll take you, Tom Norris, and I'll raise you. Oh, Ricky Jubez! How you doing, Ricky? You alright? Lovely. That took us all morning to rehearse that. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Can I, I just? Think it's, I think it's, as it's Christmas, eh, we've got someone shaped like Santa. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so fat now. It took me. You saw it. It took me ages to get comfortable. Where I have to cross my legs, and that pushes all my organs up to my throat. But I think I think I'll get away with it. Baggy you still, jumpers. You still don't look that comfortable. No, I know. <laughs> I know. You made us. Oh, as opposed to you still don't look that fat. Brilliant. That's the one you went with. Oh, you're not that comfortable. <laughs> What? <laughs> Can I just say, we just did a handshake. Yeah. And on the last video we did, I was really proud of that. I thought it was a good video, it was quite funny. And a lot of these cunts out here, they were they commented on uh, the handshake. What was up with it? They said it was very weak. Mine or yours? I think it was on mine, because I sort of went I sort of went like that. Yeah. Are you, are you a firm grip? But, no, no, because it's nonsense. I don't get that. How, like how, people go like, they just squeeze like, trust yeah, me. Yeah, trust yeah. me, I'm tough. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I yeah. don't trust you then. Yeah, yeah as long as it's not as long as it's not like horrible. I think it was that last time. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, but yeah, just normal. Mm. It's normal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. There's nothing yeah. worse than the wet napkin one, which is like, I know, that's a bit go on, do do the yeah. oh, that. I've yeah. never <laughs> had anyone do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know who did. Yeah, that's, well, come on, either shake my hand or don't. Yeah, it's awkward though, isn't it? It's, almost, a, it's a masculinity almost, like, thing. Are weird because you mm. never, you never think of doing that. Mm. No. So it, it's something learnt that it's always yeah. a bit etiquette. is always a bit weird. Yeah. I, think. I always find the the kissing a bit strange. I uh-huh. can't do it. I can't. I can't do that. In a pub. <laughs> yeah. The barman. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. It is. Yeah. No, even the mm. hug. I don't mm. know. Yeah. Do you, do, I'm not a hugger. When do you some, hug? Some of my friends hug everyone goodbye. I'm, I'm just the one that's like. That's right. Then, I know. The or oh, you just want to be the first because yeah. they're like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. But I don't know. I never know what to do. Even the, even the pressure of walking out to a a chat show. Mm. Go, I, I mean, uh, do I hug? Yeah. I, I go that way. They headbutt you. Are you not briefed on what what the way to do it is? I, d- I mean, I I don't care anymore. Mm. But yeah. in early days, when you think, "What is the what if we do something wrong or yeah. go to shake the hand and they do?" It's mm. it's awkward. Yeah. It's a, being alive <laughs> is a minefield. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, but we've only made that for ourselves, you know what I mean? Only humans have gone like, you never see animals do that kind of shit. So it's only yeah, our just, fault. They just go this up, they, an animal just go up. It strikes me that you said that it's awkward because I think in our last chat you, you mentioned that you you do get awkward. But on the, on the exterior you seem like somebody that doesn't get... I don't get awkward in everyday life I guess, but because I'm famous I, hmm. I get awkward when someone stops and talks to me because it's there's an imbalance because they think they know me yeah. and they know everything about me. Yeah. But I don't know them at all, so yeah. I don't act like they are expecting you. Do to you know act. what I mean? Yeah. So the mm. first time anyone asked me for my autograph, mm. um, they were, "Can I have your autograph?" And I was newly famous, mm. and I went, "Really?" Yeah. <laughs> and they went, uh, "Yeah." And I realised I made them feel stupid. Yeah. Because they because I'm like, oh, "What? You're an idiot if you want my autograph." Yeah. I was trying to, trying to be all sort of humble and yeah. self devil So now I go, yeah, "Sure." So. It's things like that. They, yeah. um, uh, uh, yeah, where was that? We were in the airport coming back from somewhere uh, on tour, and I walked into the, the lounge, which is like, you know, first class, a bit of decorum, <laughs> and uh, there's a bloke just filming me. Like that, just, oh, uh, I fucking not, hate not that. Not looking at me, looking at his, uh, just filming like oh. that, just happily. It's like, and I want to go, for fuck's sake. I hate but you can't, because no. you want to go, like, oh, who do you think you are? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just another person. You don't do it to him. Yeah. Go mm. and do it to the cat. No. Yeah. So it's really odd. It's, it's, I'm like, kind of in that weird middle ground, because I'm not famous, but people look like I've got a fair few views online. So people recognise me in the street, and they'll come up to me, and the worst question I can get, they'll come up and go, are you famous? If I go, yeah. Then I look like the biggest twat. I know, but it's odd you should say that that you're not famous because it's a different demographic. Because you are famous. I don't know how many million views you get, but yeah. it's more than most people on the telly these days. Mm. And it's com- it's a completely different sort of fame as well. Yeah. Like walking in here, we're in YouTube headquarters. Mm. He walks through like it's Goodfellas. They go, "Hi, Jack." Like that. They go to me. Can I have a pass, please? Not my demographic. <laughs> not my demographic. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, but you're an mm. elder statesman now. Mm. You know, how long has it been going, YouTube? A, a you know? while, yeah, t- over 10 years now. And so yeah. you've been in the, how old are you? 24. See, you're like, you're like. I'm one of the older They ones. look up to you. Yeah. That these nine-year-olds that are getting a billion views. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your opinion on YouTube? And stuff? I like it. I get caught down a, you know, mm. one of those worm. I, I usually go on and I either watch, um, uh, like I like comedy podcasts and interviews yeah. um, with things like that, or 
um, boxing and yeah. uh, UFC, I like that. But you, it's one leads to another. Yeah. And then I, I found myself the other night watching people pull maggots out of heads. Yeah. yeah How yeah, did yeah. that happen? Yeah. And I was I was going, oh. And they go, the next one, unbelievable. I go, let's have a look at that, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, and it wasn't enough. Soon I was going, I'm on a snake being pulled out of an eye. <laughs> right? Is it a maggot? I've seen it. Rubbish. <laughs> I want the head yeah. to just fall apart and this yeah. lizard come out. Yeah, I, I, saw, know it's a, weird. I saw a woman jump off of a cliff once oh. and then hit her head right oh. on the angle and her head like split open like that. And then after seeing that, I've seen it all now. Do you know what I mean? I don't know where. I, the, where I can't the, watch those. When someone yeah. really gets her, I can't even watch those skateboard oh. sort of. Uh, I think, well, that's going to really. Yeah. I, they say no one got hurt. It was just embarrassing. You know, everyone wants to see, mm. you know, a fat bloke fall down the stairs. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> because, well, no, we don't. No, we don't. Yes, you, do. <laughs> yes, you, you don't even know yeah. it yet. You don't even know it. Cue fat bloke falling down the stairs. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't want the. I can't watch the real awful. Pain and no. anguish and that. No. Maggot out of the head. There's, like, there's so much therapeutic about that. Because it's, like, it's, it's getting it's rid release. of it. It's the release, it is, isn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. I, was, yeah. I found myself going, oh, I wish I had a maggot in the head. <laughs> That'd be great to pull that out, <laughs> wouldn't it? You know. <laughs> Surprisingly, I don't have a follow up question to maggot in the head. I didn't know that was going to come up. No, I, I know. It's like those pop and spot ones. So you get the ones where it's just the them. blackhead there and they're like that and it's yeah. just mm. coming and coming. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. I got, yeah that, I got onto that as well. I'm biggest blackhead ever. Yeah. And it was like, it was like a lump of grit, and they were just pulling it. <laughs> <laughs> Million views. Christmas special. <laughs> Watch out around the table. Merry Christmas. Okay, now, yeah, that's the good thing about YouTube. Yeah. There's no one in your ear going, this is awful. Yeah. Take it off. <laughs> it goes on. Yeah. It goes on, mate. Have you seen many um, vloggers? Are you familiar with the world of vloggers? Yeah, mm. I, I have, yeah. Do you find um, that a fascinating thing? Well, it dep- I'm fascinated by them. You see, things like that have been good to me, because... Mm. Um, you know, I've always been fascinated with that, uh, you know, that everyday person becoming famous. Mm. You know, um, the, the office, apart from working in an office for 10 years, that sort of came out and we were watching those quaint docu-soaps. Mm. Do you know what I mean? When mm-hmm. an ordinary guy was followed round, and yeah. I thought that was the peak of it, but it's not. And now yeah. it's people I mean, doing anything to be famous, and um, anyone can become famous. You know, it's, mm. it's YouTube presumably is the biggest broadcaster in the world isn't yeah. it you know probably yeah. um no. so it does fascinate me and obviously i mean i like it uh, somewhat ironically mm. it's like wiggling a tooth like i've seen you do shows about like complete twats yeah. that they go on there and it's like yeah. they're talking about their their muscles yeah. and their and yeah. you want to go what are you doing yeah. when did that happen yeah. but um, presumably they're popular as well aren't they it's mad yeah it's it mad. is it is odd does that kind of I, like you don't, you, you're not a bit of person, but does it piss does it piss you off that you see some vloggers who do very little and they sort of they get millions and millions of views and then you're there you've you've sort of crafted your art for many years you've written these stand up shows these sitcoms. no it doesn't no because it, again it's it's not part of my world um, uh, it's 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 not my demographic whatever that means mm. um, but uh, no because it, it's like um, it, it it's also there's no way you can calibrate it. It's not a reflection of how good it is. It's a reflection of how popular it is. And, you know, I've added to videos of people pulling maggots out of their heads. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I, I think it, it, it's how much it's worth. right? Yeah. And I don't mean that just in a monetary sense, but yeah. um, I, I think that uh, people have a morbid desire to see things they don't even like. Yeah. Yeah. So it's no reflection on how yeah. good something is. It's or, like that live leak. Are you familiar with that? What's that? It's like a website in which you can see... I feel like your granddad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you teach me the ways of the modern world. Lively. I know, you yeah. Know yeah, um, look, look. Here he goes again. <laughs> look at that. No, it's, you know, you, Live Leak? I don't know what Live Leak is. Live Leak? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Live Leak, John? No. Say, yeah, okay, no. maybe it's just me then. Maybe I've made this up. But no, it's a website in which you can go on and the, the first page you come to is like you're accepting all these T's and C's for the shit you are about to see. And that is kind of like the YouTube for the videos that can't be on YouTube, if that makes sense. So there's like... ISIS, I'm already frightened. ISIS beheaded. Oh, like, fuck. There's people like... Go, like try, And for some reason, I think I've done it before, like years ago, but like... I've been on there. I've had a binge, and then afterwards, I think, why the fuck did my brain tell me I want to see that? Yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see it really. Mm. But um, no, it's like the uh, the dark web. I yeah. don't know, I don't know where that is or where it exists or how you know. But I don't, I don't want to go there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I haven't got that sort of 
curiosity for seeing the, the worst things in the world, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, no, I, I think it's, a, it's another form of communication. It's another yeah. choice. Yeah. I think it's great. It's vast. You know, it's, no one can, you shouldn't complain about too much choice. Yeah. It's odd. You yeah. know, I see people sort of, they've got like 300 channels on the TV mm. and they're all rubbish. I go, well, don't watch the rubbish ones. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think that uh, you, you should never really complain about too much choice. It's, it's the thing that get, gets me, and it's not that I disagree with it, but these people that come to such a level of fame just by filming their life. I don't understand it. I don't get it. They're sacrificing you know I mean? that, though, isn't it? You're sacrificing. Oh, they're, they're putting in a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of work. They're doing well, it every single also, day. Also, I don't know where it ends because I think those people who do live their life like an open wound and uh, and do anything to get a bit of fame and money, mm. um, they regret it mm. because there's not there's no respect there. To yeah. Just just see, and these people that think, well, are um, they look at uh, you know um, film stars or whatever or pop stars, and they think, well. They're rich and they're happy and everyone loves them. I want a bit of that. But they forget the bit that made them rich and happy and people love them is that they really worked hard or they're a great songwriter or they're a great singer. Yeah. And they just want to cut out the middle man and go, well, I don't want to do all that stuff that's hard and good. Yeah. I just want to be on my face, straight to my face, <laughs> yeah. straight to the red carpet. Yeah. Straight, you know, yeah. and it, it is, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's uh, an easy mistake to make. And it's, I can see why it's attractive. You know, people say, mm. oh, do, you want to, do you want to work hard for six years and become a doctor? Or just be famous now and get money for nothing? No. And they do that, yeah. but um, you've still got, uh, you know, you, you've, you produce a good product, I think. It's interesting. And uh, just the fact that the work that's gone into it, all the questions, mm. the, the fact that you're bothering, you are trying to create something. Mm. You're creating stuff as good as most TV shows. It's just on YouTube instead of TV. It ends up here anyway. Yeah. Um, do you think uh, one day we'll see that, that? Well, I don't know. Well, what do you think personally? Because um, you, you even sort of apologised. You said, well, I know I'm not really famous. Mm. And, but, and, and you are, but do you want TV to validate it in a way? In a way, if they said, we're doing a TV show about your blogging life, you'd mm. take it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's sort of like going, now I'm real. Yeah. It's, it's weird, though, because I think my opinion on it has changed over the years. Because when I was younger, I got approached by BBC Three, and it's probably one of my biggest regrets, really. I did a show about moving out for the first time. Oh, can you live without your mum and dad? Like right. that. It was called Hotel of Mum and Dad. And right. me, me and my girlfriend at the time did it. And it was just really fake. Like They, they basically went, oh, he's, he's only started on YouTube. He only makes £40 a month or whatever. Like, Can you do it? And then... When it went out, I was kind of like, I'm going to be validated as a YouTuber because they've done this show about me and stuff like that. But it's not. If anything, it's it's the opposite. Like when I look back on it, well, I find it cringy, and I found well, it that's the problem as well. It's like you know, you are uh, you are sort of um, opening yourself mm. to be laughed at in a way. Yeah. If you if you do those reality shows, yeah. there's no good ending really because no. even if you come out wow, people don't take you seriously because they go, well, he's not real. He was a real. So yeah. it's it's sort of a, a, a vicious circle mm. and. Um, and if you're not in control of the edit, you, you, mm. you're at their mercy. I knew a guy who was a manager of a band, mm. right? And um, uh, the band had sort of um, uh, gone with someone else. And he got approached by um, a radio, uh, BBC Radio, to do a, be part of a documentary talking about this, right? And when it came out on air, the documentary series was called Life Losers. And he was one of those because he was talking about losing... And, and, he, and he didn't know that. Wow. So it's how it's packaged as well. Yeah. Just like newspapers. If newspapers um, do say something you do and they go, oh, what a great guy for doing this, right? The yeah. comments are great. If they say, what an idiot for doing the same thing, the comments are terrible. Yeah. So they, they sort of taint your, or, or, or um, you know, they set out the, the stall for how you're meant to be perceived. Yeah. And that's what's dangerous. Whereas here, you control your own labour. And that's the advice I'd give to in any walk of life. If you can own your own labour mm. and do it on your terms, mm. you'll be happier. Even, it, whether, you, whether you make more or get more views or whatever, if it's your thing, it's, it makes you 10 times more happier. I think yeah. that, and I think happiness is the only aim. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, it, it, people try and take that shortcut to happiness and get it wrong. But if they thought about it, why am I doing this? Well, it's to be happy. Mm. And so if you don't need to do this to be happy. If, if my doing this makes you happy, then mm. fine. But d d don't work out what you think can make you happy. Mm. Just go f cut out the middleman and, mm. and be happy. Has there ever been a project where you've you are writing it, but you have had to tick certain boxes and you've kind of 
taking your creativity somewhere where you didn't want to go. Well, to panda to a certain Yeah, not, 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 like, not like Andy and Extras, but like, you know. When, no, outside when... outside the, the sort of laws of the land and broadcast um, laws, no, I've never, I've never done that. But you, you have to go within the guidelines. Sure. You can't just go mental uh, <laughs> on, you know, daytime TV. Yeah, uh, and you go, well, what's up with swearing? Well, mm. it's not allowed. <laughs> It's simple as that. You yeah. can swear if you want, but you'll be be kicked off. And yeah. there's no there's no victory yeah. in going on this morning and going cunt. <laughs> it's like you you get you, you, you do it once, sure, yeah. you know. But it, <laughs> that's but, Holly's catchphrase. It's, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so um, no, I, I I try and but I like I like constraints. I w- like working within the rules because yeah. it gives me a how far can I go? Because mm. if you can do anything. Well, there's no such thing as cutting edge or boundary. If you do it anything, no one cares. Yeah. Right? So I like working within those that, that framework. You know, even if I play a game, I go, what are the rules? And yeah. I want to go, how can I beat the system? <laughs> so I like there being a system yeah. for me to beat, um, if, um, if that makes sense. With, with writing stand-up, I know I came and saw your show in Manchester, and obviously you mentioned about... Didn't even say how good it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, That's it was... the other thing with people coming up the street, and they go, uh, saw, saw your show, and I go, oh, thanks. And I think they haven't said whether they liked it or not yet. They could go, it was awful. I go, cheers anyway. <laughs> no, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. You mentioned in the show about Jane sometimes getting a bit worried with your new material, and sometimes, like looking over it and stuff. And yeah. Has she ever actually made you take a joke out or made you change a joke in fear of the... No, I do run things by her, because I think, is this okay? Yeah. And, um, and, and she might say, oh, I don't know. Cause we're usually worried, we're not usually worried about um, uh, breaking the law or um, <laughs> uh, saying something that um, you know, I don't really believe. We're, you, you, the only thing that stops me doing something is really hurting someone's feelings who doesn't deserve it. Mm. So if I'm going after pretension, pomposity, someone's behaviour, whatever, Mm -hmm. that's fine. Whereas um, I try not to go after things that people can't help. Yeah. So I, I I don't do I don't do racist jokes or mm. sexist jokes or homophobic jokes mm. or um, that's not to say I don't talk about race sex homophobic I do I talk about that but there's a difference is what side you come down on and it's not the subject of a joke that counts it's the target but what I don't go I, I don't laugh at someone's bereavement mm. or so I don't I don't because I, I don't find it funny personally and even yeah. if there's a great joke out there mm. I think I don't go there because they don't deserve that yeah. you know yeah. um, so I, I, I like I sort of like my targets to be fair yes. um, and that's not to do with being popular because you say things that, that, that you mean and that are safe that still make you unpopular um, you know some people are offended by equality mm. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know the, the, so but you yeah, mustn't pander to that going on that what your basis of going for someone who's a fair target. I wanted to know your opinion on the backlash James Corden got about Weinstein, because obviously Weinstein deserves any kind of criticism. Or yeah. Whatever. But then he had such a bad backlash from the joke. Was it the, I wanted to know, if, was it because it was a shit joke? It if was. You, if, it was yeah. a shit it joke. Was, it yeah. was, it was, it was, you know, if, if you, you can go after contentious issues, but they better be good, mm. you better be on the right side, and you better be clear. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, and to a certain extent, um, it better be the right time yeah. as well, because uh, um, it, it, you've got a, you've got to be very confident if yeah. you're dealing with anything taboo or contentious. Um, uh, you you you've got to put the work in. I don't just go out there and try and ruin people's lives or undermine the moral fabric of America. Mm. But the jokes are thought out and that's why I can stand by them because mm. you know it doesn't mean people might get the, they still might get the wrong end of the stick but I've done my best. It's not someone not getting my joke isn't my fault. Yeah. Um well but, what do you think of this because I posted a tweet last night and you I think you 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 really know about offence and context quite a lot and I I have to agree with everything you say and that's why I look up to you as a comedian but I posted something on Twitter last night it wasn't so much a joke but just more of a statement and people got offended by it and said that I was and I'm happy to be proven wrong here but people said that I was taking the piss out of suicide I said about um, YouTubers sometimes call themselves social media influencers and I think it's a very arrogant way to, to say it. There's so many different words you can say. So I just posted a kind of semi-joke that said, if you refer to yourself as a social media influencer, in a way you're right, because you're influencing me to take up heroin or suicide by doing that. And yeah. somebody said that that was taking the piss out of suicide. No. But then I made the reference that if you tell your mum 
that her f her cooking is so bad it makes you feel sick. You're not taking the piss out of vomit. You're no. not taking the piss out of the act. Like, do you no, know what I mean? So it's like, no, that is fair enough. Yeah, mm. you're using a very a dark simile yeah. um, to exaggerate your point. And yeah. that's what comedy usually is, it's exaggeration. Yeah. So when you say to someone like, oh my God, I was starving. Blah, blah, blah. And you don't mean you're literally starving. It's, it's a dark, that's a very dark thing to say. Yeah. You're, you're not starving. There are people that starve. And you go, well, okay, no, I didn't literally. <laughs> so, so, yeah, no, you, you, uh, uh, that's not saying, uh, um, you can equate dark things to less dark things because that's what, that's what poetry is. Mm. That's what an analogy is. Mm. It's, it's, um, it's exaggerating somewhere to get your point across. So no, there's no way uh, you were you mm. were making fun of um, suicide. Then mm. you you may be using it in a trivial sense, um, and you may, pe may think people you know remind them of bad things yeah. that happened to them. But again, that's not quite your your problem because mm. um, everything reminds people of things. It basically. Mm. Bad things happen to people, yeah. and that's not our fault. Yeah. You don't want to rub salt in the wound, or mm. you know, like I can do a, a joke about a very dark thing, and someone in the audience it might have happened to them. I didn't know that. Uh, if, if I went out there and said, "Hands up, um, who's had something really good?" Ha, ha, ha yeah. that's different. <laughs> yeah. You know, that that's a very different thing. Yeah. Um, but um, I think that's a that's a classic example of someone getting offended because they've mistaken the the subject of a joke with the actual target yeah. the target was not that subject the subject was you being so annoyed at mm. um uh, pretentious mm. youtubers i think mm. i think that's clear yeah okay? and i remember when i was on twitter i did a joke and if one person was offended i delete it and i think oh that's not what i meant yeah and i think well hold on though and then people would go the rest of us got it the rest yeah. so you've also got a duty to the Intelligent people who get it. Yeah. If if you if you cut every joke that might offend someone, there are no jokes in the world. Yeah. Literally, someone. Uh, uh, why did the chicken cross the road? Hey, mate, my chicken died last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come I'm on, a, I'm a vegan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so um, you you do your best. But back to James Corden. Um, I, I think he bounced out in a sort of light entertainment way, and then tried to do you know, taboo crunching things. It wasn't quite him. The jokes weren't quite up to That's scratch. Fucking, fucking a plant, pot plant. Yeah, that? yeah, there wasn't a real, there wasn't a real joke. It's like, uh, you know, I, I deal in those dark subjects all the time, but I want to say, don't try this at home. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there is a skill to it. And, and I do feel a responsibility. I'm not one of these people that thinks, you know, comedy is your conscience taking a day off. My, my conscience never takes a day off. Mm. I can justify every joke. Mm. Um, uh, and, I, and I probably, I probably talk about it too much and defend it too much. I should just go whatever. Mm. But I don't want people to think that I'm one of those people that go, oh, it was a joke, because I don't do that either. Mm. I don't go, like, it was a joke. It's a joke, and this is why it's all right. I think that's what you must be able to yeah. be able to say at the end of the day. So if you would have said those same jokes that caught, do you, do you think you can get away with more because you're a slightly edgier comic? I, not know just by, that? I, I, well, I, I think people. You could certainly say that when it's a closed club. Like, people who come into my gigs have no right to say, oh, I didn't know he'd talk about AIDS and famine and cancer. Mm. Well, well, you, you, well, I, well, you should know. And two, mm. it's not necessarily a bad thing. Even in this show now, I say, you know, a joke about a bad thing isn't as bad as the bad thing. It's not even necessarily condoning the bad thing. It could be anti the bad thing. It depends on the actual joke. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't rely on them going, everyone knows uh, who he is and he's joking I, I still think that the 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 joke has an afterlife because taken out of context that joke still got to stand up for itself and it often doesn't you know any one line in this current show would be horrendous out of context yeah but in context everyone there knows the build-up knows why i'm saying it they've got the backstory they've been taken on a journey it's like if, if you if you went out and shouted a punchline to someone you'd be like, oh, i don't i don't get it that's you mental yeah. you have to you <laughs> yeah. have to be there for the whole joke and sometimes the lead up to the joke mm. um uh, and i think um uh i think the problem was if you really do deal in taboo subject, it's got to be good and you've got to be on the right side. Yeah. Um, do you so think it's, if... it's a skill, you know, it is a skill. Yeah, 100%. It, I think people think that well, you just go out there and you shout things. Whereas mm. uh, I work on a joke or a routine for months. Yeah. You know, longer than a journalist takes to say how terrible it was. Yeah. You yeah. know, they've they've taken a few minutes to look at this joke. and Well, yeah. I, I've, I've been, this is, this is bulletproof, yeah. this gag. Um, mm. 
And so, and you have got to be bulletproof mm. um, because for when it is taken out of context. Do you feel like because the the world that we're in now, 2017, is much different to say when The Office was released? It is different. Would do you think it's, it's almost impossible to say? But do you think if The Office was released now, would it be re, would would it be perceived much differently? Or would, would all jokes stay in there? Well, <clears throat> no, it's not that it'd be. You know, people haven't changed that much, um, but how people pander to people have changed. So. It would be the same, uh, you know, cross section of humanity watching this and either getting it or not on it. Mm-hmm. But in those days, um, uh, I wasn't scared of um, taking a complaint and telling them why they were wrong. Now, if the BBC or someone gets a complaint, that close it down. Yeah. We had the complaint, yeah. like me on Twitter in the early days. Yeah. Whereas you should be able to stand up and say, "Well, no, I'll tell you why this is okay." Mm. And some people just want to be heard. Mm. Like I worked in my real job. Um, uh, you know, one of the things I used to do was like customer care training and all that as part of my job. Yeah. And um, some people would complain, and all they wanted you to do was call them back. And they, you'd say, "Oh, sorry about that," and they go, "Oh, thanks for calling. Yeah, don't worry about it." I think people just want to think that they're they're listened to and they're taken seriously. Yeah. And you know, they've had a long time of uh, 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 you know, if if you've had a life of not having that done, you want to make a difference. That's what a heckler is. That's what a troll is. They just That's want to, they I, want their moment. They, they want their yeah. moment. That's why people join terrible, awful, offensive fringe groups because they think, well, I'm something now. Yeah. At least I'm making the news. Well, you, yes, you're dressed as Hitler. <laughs> of course you've made the news. <laughs> no, it doesn't a make do- you good. Yeah, a dog in a Hitler <laughs> costume would make the news. Exactly, yeah. 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 <laughs> you, and, you know, I think people forget, you know, think, well, there's no difference now between fame and infamy. Yeah. People have thought they just... That cavemen used to blow woad on their hand and leave their print. I was here, yeah. and that's what all this is. Mm. That's what people just want to go. I was here, yeah. and, uh, um, and they just want to be part of the causal web. They want to think they made a difference. Did you get many hecklers on the humanity tour? I think I uh, did. I got. I think I got one. Really? I think I got one. Do you, really? re- do you react, or do you just? No, I try and ignore it, but um, this guy was persistent. And what was he shouting? Um, he was shouting something. Oh, it was really, okay. It was really awkward. Because I do a bit about why I don't have kids, mm. right? And it's mm. really, it's really, I go crazy, you know about it, mm-hmm. oh, the reason I don't have kids. And it gets more and more weird and, and terrible and yeah. offensive. Um, and I started to think about not having kids. And, uh, and I don't get hecklers at all. Um, I think I've created an environment where they don't they don't bother, you yeah. know. Um, they they're there to listen. And it's a show, and it's yeah. it's a thoughtful show. And he went, wait, wait, wait. I went, what? He went, it's a tragic waste of talent. Uh, I went, shut the fuck up, you <laughs> cunt. Right? Right? He went, no, I don't. Shut the no, shut the. And all the audience clapped and laughed because you're, you're always going to win, yeah, right? Yeah. Right? And he was drunk. I said, fucking it. I got on. And I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about doing the routine, and I was thinking, oh fuck, maybe he was being nice. Oh, yeah. Maybe he was going, oh, that's a waste, because I like you, and you should have a kid. With... And uh, and this started praying on my mind. So now I feel like a fucking arsehole that I've shut, I've shut up. At, right. And I went, when I had a break, and I said, sorry, mate, did you mean that? He went, yeah, that's what I meant. I went, I'm so sorry I called you a cunt. <laughs> Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. He went, yeah. I went, but still, <laughs> don't, don't even interrupt to be nice. Because it's, you know, and then at the end I started Because I just couldn't kind of sitting there going, oh, I really was enjoying the show. And I said something nice and he called me a cunt and everyone laughed. <laughs> so, like, even even though he interrupted the show and annoyed me and ruined my flow, yeah. I still thought, oh, God, maybe he was being nice. and yeah. just didn't know how to... So I'm very conscious of that, and the nearer the punchline, the more it ruins the joke. And yeah. Shut the fuck up, basically. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> right? Um, but I still think it has to be proportionate. You know, I think if someone sort of shouts, someone, "We love you, Ricky," you don't go, "Die cancer." <laughs> you know, it's still really ruin the Christmas meal. You're still meal, a that. human being. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I don't forget I'm a person. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you in Cambridge, great show, and um, <laughs> when I saw you, there's a woman next to us who's lo- like, I think some people put the laugh on because they want you to reference it. There's like animal noises. Well, they, they hi- like, heighten it. Like, ha, ha. No one laughs like that. No, I, I know, I know what you mean. So yeah. Again, again, people want to go, 
That they almost want you to go, who's got that weird laugh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Come I, up I, here. I, yeah. I do try and ignore it, anyone who's sort of attention seeking. I do it on Twitter as well. Mm. Attention seeking is the most annoying thing on Twitter. Yeah. They can say awful things, right? And if they mean it, that doesn't annoy me as much as if they, again, early days, someone say something after me, I'd slam them and they go, oh, I just got a, a, a yeah, hero. Yeah, I go, yeah. what, if, why yeah. would you do that? Yeah. Why would you rather be thought of as a complete fucking moron yeah. than not noticed? Jack Howard said that, the exact same thing, That's the he? way of the world. People yeah. would rather be known as a fucking idiot than mm. not known at all. And I don't know when that happened. Maybe it's always been around, mm. but now we can watch you know, every toilet <coughs> wall in the world at once on yeah. Twitter and we see it more. Same mm. as complaints, you know. Um, 20 years ago, if you saw something you didn't like on the BBC, get a pen and paper and go, Dear BBC, oh, I can't be fucking bothered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now you can fire off Gosh. a tweet, and that makes the news, particularly if you're a famous person. Tweets make the fucking news. Yeah. How mad is that? That's mad. That's what I do when there's opinions, and I go, uh, Well, so and so didn't like it. There's one bloke. <laughs> Why are we? Why is he on the news? <laughs> Not liking a film or something. Yeah. Scranton one four three thought um, <laughs> the new Spider Man was a bit boring. <laughs> Don't put fucking some Scranton what on the fucking news. It validates him. Yeah. Don't go Everyone there. Everyone starts going who's Scranton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well Scranton really. didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I bet there's there is now. Someone started Scranton and went for them. Yeah, Already. Yeah. yeah. I actually love Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, God. Just go back to humanity for a second. What was one city, one place that, um, obviously, you've got the big ones like Manchester, London, LA. Was there one that you didn't particularly expect to be as giving as an audience? One They're that all, all great. Mm. And they got better and better, probably because the show gets better and better and you get better and better. And. Um, uh, oh God! Uh, oh, let's say uh, Belfast was great. Belfast right. was great. Yeah, they love the IRA stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I was nervous about it. And I, and they, and I went phew, like, and they mm. laughed more because they. <laughs> yeah. Same as Dublin. Dublin was great. Dublin mm. was amazing. Um, Manchester, yeah, they, oh, oh, they've all been great. Um, a big surprise. Oh, I'm, I'm usually worried about the big arenas because mm. I think it's not really the place. Um, for comedy, you know, you, 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 I, I, I love that theatre vibe, but mm. Dublin proved me wrong, first of all, that was mm. like 10,000. And then I did Copenhagen, you're worried about the language barrier, and that was like 13,000, and they were amazing. That just, uh, they got everything, I mean, the screens almost make it slightly more intimate in a way, um, and the sound's so much better these days, it's mm. not like playing an aircraft hangar, they've got, you know, um, yeah. so I, I worry about that, you worry about a day of the week, I don't like playing weekends, in England, because of the not. drinking culture. Cause I, I don't want people to go along because I'm on the telly and they can have a drink. Yeah. I don't want that. I want yeah. people to go along and treat it like a theatre show and they want to yeah. get some out of it. So, you know, I, I sort of play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in, uh, in England and then I don't worry so much around the world. Do you like, think a, a lesser comedian, I don't think you can particularly blame them, but like a lesser comedian might have the opposite view on that? They want them weekend gigs? Well, they do want the weekend because they're easy to sell. Oh, so okay. They're easy to sell, yeah. I, I, I make it twice as hard for myself selling out a, yeah. a world tour by not, you know, doing yeah. weekend gigs. But, yeah. but I, you know, I'd, I'd rather. The thing is, I'd rather do um, uh, four Wembleys, right? Mm. Everyone was there. They loved it. They can't believe their luck. Than five Wembleys, and all the people on that Saturday night were going because they liked a bit of me in the Muppets, and they could have a drink with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't. Or they took along there. I don't want that. Yeah. I don't. I don't. You know. Well, I, I know how. How many tickets do you really want to sell? Do you mm. know what I mean? It's yeah. like I can always go back. I can go back next Thursday if mm. they want to come. They can come. Mm. So you don't want to prize people out of there. Mm. You, know, you want people. Um, you see, I, I, I do gigs, and it goes on sale. They sell out in a minute. If I put another gig on and it sells out in an hour, mm. right? If I put it on, if I think well, the next one will take a two days, I think well that's getting people that aren't really fans a chance to come along, and uh, right. and I don't and I don't do it. Yeah, you know. So um, I've got other things to to yeah. do. It's not my it's not my only source of income, you know. Yeah. So I don't have to. And also because I can play around the world, I don't have to prize out every single person in Britain. Yeah. Britain's like a a third of my yeah. Output because I, I can. I'm luckily uh, I can play everywhere in the world. Is it I your favourite thing to do? It is now. Yeah. It is my favourite thing to do. It used to be my third or fourth favourite thing to do. I always thought of myself as like a 
writer, director, performer, yeah. and I thought that stand up was something I should do and I'd like I loved mm -hmm. and I don't, and um uh, and this last tour it is the favorite my favorite thing I do. Is that not because if you've got your fingers in all these different pies that's the last pie you ate. Do you know what I mean? Is it hard not to always uh, go the, back to the last thing? There's, no, there's lots of reasons why I think this is my favourite thing. Yeah. It's my favourite tour because I think it's my best show. Yeah. I think it's my best show because I approached it differently. I approached it like a real stand-up. My first sort of four um, tours, I, I sort of wrote mm. and I went out and practised them and got good. It was, mm. you know, but this one I walked out on the stage with a few things on the back of my hand. Yeah. And I, you know, I, it was really organic. Right. I think it was the best because I'm older. Mm. Um, and that sounds odd, but I think it does take you 15 years to be a good stand-up. I'm finally, I think I got there, I've got a voice, mm -hmm. um, it's, it, you know, it's being honest, I've got nothing to prove. Um, I think it's my favourite because people know me now, they've known me for 15 years, so I can get away with more and they, just like amongst mates, mm. when, you, when you do those sort of jokes with mates, you don't go, sorry, I don't really mean that. They yeah. go, I know you don't really mean that. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they know me. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think what hit me is the privilege. Mm. The privilege that I can say anything I want, mm. right? And uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And and that, with that comes a responsibility. And I I I, and I hope I've taken that on. Mm. Um, but it, it it's because um, I, I, and the world's changed in the seven years that it lasted. It, it there does seem to be a, um, there seems to be a bigger responsibility for comedians these days to tell the truth mm. because of all the. Because you've lives. got people like Donald Trump, like it's, just I mean, chatting absolute shit. It, it's it's unbelievable this post truth mm. era. Mm. You know, it, it's I think um, everyone has the responsibility now. It's like it's it's almost like it's made us kids grow up. We're idiots. We want the world to be lovely so we can run around and be a fucking idiot. Mm. But when the people in charge are acting more like a fucking child than you are, you've got to step up to the plate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If your parents aren't responsible, you better be responsible. Yeah. Do, you, do you see what mm, I'm saying? Yeah. And I sort of really, I feel that now, mm. nowadays. And, um, but you know, that the, the, the vote is split. And mm. I, do, I do try and keep politics out of comedy as much as I can. That's my own personal opinion. And, I, and I'm, you know, myself on Twitter and in places like this, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I will say what I think. But, mm -hmm. When you're, if you're relying on a round of applause from an audience that just agree with you, that loses something comedically. So um, I, d I don't go explicitly um, party political. Mm. I talk about things like ego and, and truth and, and nonsense. And so I do it that way. But, mm. um, you know, I don't, I don't think I name any politicians in humanity, mm. even though I talk about the politics of the day and what's different and why the world's getting worse. Mm. Um, so, uh, uh, I, you know, it's not because I'm scared of offending people or going along. So it's just that um, I think my first real commitment is to comedy. I'm charging them to see comedy. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a lecture. Yeah. And they go, well, thanks very much, mate. But we wanted a laugh. Mm. You know? Yeah. And there's so many people making these sort of Trump jokes and stuff like that now. It's kind of an easy target. I find if ever I tweet anything negatively about Trump, I get a lot of people go, yeah, good one. Like it's, We've heard it all before. Do you know well, what I mean? Well, you, so. you know, and, and that's true. Um, and uh, I mean, to a certain degree, I think that it's beyond a joke. Mm. There's something to be said yeah. for, I, I don't want to joke about it. Yeah. It's getting serious now. Uh, it, it was weird. Because at the start it was funny, wasn't it? Was it? Funny. it was funny, and now it's kind of like, oh shit, he's retweeting that. Oh, he's doing that. I oh, mean, okay, it's been a year now. Like, I know. There's been, people. Lives are affected. Yeah, it's real scary. lives are affected. You know, because even at the beginning when I was sort of like jo joked about it, you yeah, know, I'm watching from afar. Like, there were people going, well, we're in America, dude. Yeah, it was it's you know. Yeah, these these are people losing their yeah. jobs and being hated by their neighbour because mm. of what someone said about it. It's like yeah. so it. It is serious. It's it mental. is serious. Um, it's mental. Yeah, I was going to say, what you're saying about as well, pushing the boundaries, being edgier. And nowadays, with the culture as well, I think people have changed since you started doing stand-up to now. And I think people are more easily offended or, like you say, they pander to it a bit more. Is it easier being edgier now? But, but then do you, do you think people are easily offended now? Or is it just like you said, pe people have got Twitter, so they'll let you know now? Like back in the day when people... Well, and they know that they can be heard. Now people can frighten people. They can go... I'm offended, and there's someone to go. Oh, someone's offended. We better do something. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I, I think they 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 use it to get their own way. Yeah. They can they they know that someone will crumble, or mm -hmm. they can get some closed down. And what you want is for those people in charge to go. Well, we're not going to crumble to that because everyone's different. Everyone's got their own opinion. And 
it, you know, I, I, I like I like that saying that the the only valid form of censorship is people's right not to listen, and that's we're talking about art or jokes. We're not talking about real lives. Yes, you know, it's not your right to. That's the other thing people mistake. Like, I go, you know, you can you can say what you want. Right? People go, so, oh yeah, what well, like Hitler did? Well, no, it wasn't what he said, was it? <laughs> it was the shit he did. <laughs> If he just said it, it wouldn't have been such a problem. Would it? <laughs> anyway, this is this is a, a, a Christmas special somehow. Merry so, Christmas. <laughs> so I want to ask you a few festive questions. Oh, good. What's a traditional day like for you and Jane at Christmas time? Christmas. Are you oh, a fan of Christmas? I love fucking Christmas. Right. It's it, it really is. Mm. It is a day off for mm. me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. No one's working. I've got. Mm. A, I'm not screwed. I've got. To, I've got to enjoy myself. Yeah. No, it really is. I've always loved Christmas. Mm. Um, and. Uh, Typical day, we work, work, work up to it, and uh, you know we decorate the house, and we have a little soiree just before with friends, and um, and then the day is uh, uh, I wake up, we open our presents. Oh, it's just it's, it's a standard it's, day. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah every day. <laughs> yeah, every day we open our presents. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. There, yeah, there is it's some... like big in my house. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, um, uh, 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 we open our presents. Um, we have a little drink. I mean, that is the only day. That you can have a little gin and tonic at half ten. Yeah. Um, it used to be watch Noel Edmonds go round and give sick kids presents. Yeah. He's not. He's, he's not Don't on do anymore. That now. Yeah. Um, no, I love all that. Oh, I love all that. You really oh, get involved. Oh God, I love. Mm. I love crying at half ten into a gin. <laughs> he got his. He got his thing he wanted. That's a lovely start. Yeah. And then it's sort of like working the way up to the, you know, the two o'clock feast with yeah. best of top of the pops. That's back now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, in the olden days, I was like, oh, I love this. Now I'm going, who's that? <laughs> I really am the grand. Who's that? <laughs> Rihanna. What? <laughs> <laughs> Still love it, though. Um, uh, Do you, because you, you, your diet's changed a bit. What's, what yeah. are you having for Christmas dinner now? Tofurky. Tofurky. <laughs> Nut roast. <laughs> I mean, everything else is the same, you know. You know, you've got all the Pixel. lovely, lovely veg and mm. all the, you know, the parsnips and the caramelised potatoes. Parsnips are the one. Bread oh, sauce. Oh, when it's crispy and the chewy. Oh, they are the one. On. Bread sauce. Yeah. No? Bread, Bread sauce. sauce. Yeah, good. Yeah, bit of gravy. Mm. Bit, of, Bread bit of veggie gravy, just yeah. as long as it's thick. Yeah. 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 Skin. Yeah. yeah. Fuck thin gravy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my girlfriend's mum has the thick. It's like water. It's like brown water. It's yeah. horrible. No, it's horrible. It's not, is there? Is you there want bits in it? Don't you? you I want just want it to be so. Th- I want it to be a solid. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then it's like at the end, it's like a mush that you d- scrape up yeah. with a bit of bread. Just oh. Eat that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. it's good. Yeah, it's good. no, it's, the, it's, it's the, even without real meat, and you know, the, <laughs> even without the carcasses of murdered animals, <laughs> the Christmas dinner can still be a joy. <laughs> What's the shittest present you've ever received or given? Uh, um, I still get a chill down my spine when I think of the worst gift I've ever given. <laughs> Go on. Um, well, I was too old to give a shit gift. You know, right. when you, we got older brothers and sisters, yeah, they give you good gifts because they're working, and you're a kid, you can get away with shit. Mm. But I remember when I was 14, I think my sister got me an album I wanted and a bird table and a science thing, and I got her a, um, a big bottle of shampoo. <laughs> Londis <laughs> and it was like oh cheers like that and I just thought yeah. and, I, and it hit me I go I'm too old to that I'm too old yeah. to give a bottle of shampoo oh that's cool my dad yeah. got me a pillow once and all, all our cousins got pillows <laughs> with stuff on they liked so I got a car I'd have no idea why I've never been into cars I got a car and, and it was a Beetle and the reg- registration plate said Jake <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great yeah. Yeah, oh, it's, that's brilliant! It's not like it's a nan I never see. I see it all the time. It's like, like, what's up, Jake? <laughs> yeah. When I was about um, uh, seven or eight, um, my auntie uh, Edna. Mm. I, uh, so when was this? So this was like um, I don't know, nineteen sixty eight, sixty nine, early days. So mm-hmm. um, Fiverr was a good present. She yeah. gave me a Fiverr, right? Um, <laughs> right, and uh, in a card. Right, and my mum went. I went. Oh, five. I was like, yes. Oh, wow. What are you gonna give Auntie Edna? And I said, four quid. (laughs) 
She went, you can't give her four quid. I went, why? She went, you can spend four quid on her, but you can't give her four quid. I thought Proper. this is the perfect, yeah. this is the perfect present. Yeah. I'm up. We've both given each other a good fucking present there. Four quid. Come on, auntie. Four quid. 1968. Yeah. And get I'm yourself, the kid. Get yourself something yeah. nice. Right? Like and I'm the kid. Yeah. <laughs> One pound. One pound profit. Yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's quality. <laughs> worst present? I was just thinking, the worst thing I used to do, because I, I used to always draw the cards, put a lot of effort in drawing them, and draw, yeah, draw, draw from yeah. my dad. And I drew yeah. a picture, because my dad just likes to watch sport and sit there, and he used to smoke, and I just drew a picture of a fag packet. <laughs> on the card. That's <laughs> so great. What, what, what yeah. is my dad like? Cigarette I know. Well, that We've was got the issues. <laughs> Everyone used to get my dad, you know, half ounce of old Auburn. Mm, you know, yeah. it was like tobacco, things you'd buy anyway, but it's like saving money. You might as well give him like five bob. <laughs> it's like really odd when yeah. it's like, that is like a token. <laughs> Although now, if you want to get me a gift, right, mm. you can't go wrong with something like a bottle of wine or a bottle of whiskey. I'll drink it eventually. Yeah. You know, it's a nice gift. Yeah. It's not like going, oh, well, well, the, the worst presents, I think, right? There's arrogant presents, mm. like it's more about them than yeah, you. Like your DVD. There you go, fly yeah. fishing. <laughs> well, because you like fly fishing, I've got to fucking like fly yeah. fishing, right? Yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, or stressful presents, where it's like, um, um, t- 10 lessons skydiving. Yeah. Fuck me, now yeah. I've got to go skydiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like fucking yeah. hell. My, my girlfriend bought me ten skiing lessons, and I've never d- been skiing. And it's a thoughtful present, and I like it, but I've not. I've still not been. It's uh, a it's, year it's, on. I know, but it's it's so it's not so bad then. But when it's someone you can't go see, with her, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But when they go, well, did yeah. you go on that skiing thing? Yeah. Nah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I didn't. In yeah. the bin. Yeah, like her mum really likes a ty- uh, Tokyo Myers, the guy, the guy that won Britain's Got Talent. He's a pia- pianist, and. Uh, she, I said to her, I was like, I'll get you tickets to go see him. And she was like, I'm not going to London because of ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> right. When, uh, I remember I was 18, the first time I was going abroad, which was like, I got a temporary passport and I was going to France yeah. for the day, right? And um, my mum my said, um, uh, what are you going to France for? There's parts of red in you ain't seen. <laughs> which is good. Yeah. So innocent as well. So sweet. Yeah. There's no, but that is a, that is a, a mentality, you know, I, I think um, particularly Brits and Americans, they, mm. they, they think that there's no, there's no point. You don't need to see the world. You've got, we've got everything we need yeah. here. A car though. <laughs> you, don't, you don't go out nowadays. A car though and Netflix. Look at now. I, I never, in fact, lose the legs. I don't need these. Sell the legs. <laughs> Sell the legs. <laughs> Sell the legs. Put it towards a Carlo and Netflix. <laughs> I just remembered this really sweet story that um, my sister did one Christmas. We was, my, I, I was just old enough to know that Santa wasn't real, and she was just young enough to still believe in it. So my dad was like, "Okay, you go upstairs, go in her room, and then I'm going to be leaving with a sack of stuff, and I'll go into the night." And obviously dressed as Santa. And uh, so I woke my sister up. I was like, look out the window. So she got up. She looked out the window. And uh, my dad was going off with all this stuff. And she just turned to me and went, Santa's got the same trainers as Dad. I was like, <laughs> That's great. How on earth did you, how on earth did you even see that? That's you lovely. Shit? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then obviously, because my dad, my dad smokes weed. And he never and then, came back. No, yeah, he never came back. That's when he left. My dad smokes weed. <laughs> <laughs> it, lov- it was a lovely story. Yeah. It's Christmas again. Yeah. It robbed when, us. When, yeah. when, when, when Santa came, my dad didn't. <laughs> Oh, Dad smokes weed, and my sister was at school one day, and he he calls weed his puff. And uh, she was at sc- she was at school, and the teacher was blowing up these balloons, and she just tur- the teacher turned to my sister and went, "Oh, I'm all out of puff." And my dad and my sister, went, my dad's got loads of that in his tin. <laughs> in his tin. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. Yeah. Parents' evening was fucking awkward that year. That's for sure. It's, Ricky, we're going to finish on um, some Twitter questions. Go on. And a quick word association game. Okay. So we're going to give you one word. I want to see what you... What, what, oh, the pressure. Yeah, there's fucking pressure on this. So it was really... I was really <laughs> fast. <laughs> I'm going to ponder. I'm going to go, well, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean exactly? So let's go for the the office. What? There's one word, is it? Huh? You didn't the one word. Oh, oh yeah, I'm yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an intro. Um, right, sorry. Sorry, go. Wait, 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 go. One word to describe the office. Cringy. Golden Globes. Fun. Trump. Can't. <laughs> Netflix. Oh. Easy. <laughs> America. Glorious. Slough. 
grey. <laughs> Say grey or grey? Grey. Oh, okay. Vloggers. Um, God. Oh. <laughs> Vloggers. Exactly I don't again. know because I don't know enough about it. Um, enthusiastic, I think. <laughs> and finally, 2018. The future. <laughs> That'll do, that'll do, fair play. Oh, I'll call Trump a cunt. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Am I the first? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got a few Twitter questions from people, and uh, that'll, be, that'll, be it. that'll be it. So, um, Mark West, would you rather live off of a diet consisting of only pork pies or scotch eggs? The hard-hitting questions here. Mm. So obviously oh. you don't eat neither now, but... Why no? Well, I suppose I'd have to go for the scotch egg, so I could take the... Me oh, yeah. off and eat the egg, I suppose. Are oh, so you staying true to now? I think so. Oh, if I what if if I wasn't, we're, what's we're, nicer? <laughs> and if I wasn't, yeah, if, uh, no morals. Yeah, we're in a world now where you, the, I think it would still be the Scotch egg. Would it? Because the pork pie, you open the pork pie. First of all, the crust on a pork pie, it's not like pastry. It's like concrete. Yeah, it's harder. Do you know what I mean? I don't like neither. Oh, I like but, uh, that. But that thing that people like with that jelly on the inside, I always took that off. You've been to let that settle and it's been to melt in, apparently. Oh, really? Room oh. temperature, you're going to leave it there, then it settles and it keeps it moist. And then what? Fuck, what's the <laughs> yeah, meat? Yeah. I mean, what is <laughs> yeah, the meat? Yeah. <laughs> it's grey. You, you, you should eat a pork pie without cutting open with your eyes shut. Because when you look and you go, well, what animal's grey on the inside? <laughs> from Slough. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this pig was from Slough. <laughs> Uh, oh. Sue Pottle says, if you were on your deathbed, I love this question, and could muster up the energy for one last action, but it had to be one of the following, oh. <laughs> would you have a wank or would you just shoot up some heroin? What would you go for? Just to see what it's like. You've got about half an hour left. You've only got energy to do one of those things. I'm oh. assuming, I'm hoping I'm, uh, I'm, very, uh, I'm very old. Yeah, yeah. Right, well then, I think it's got to be the heroin. Yeah, just to see. Because if I'm sort of 87... With what they're like now, at 87, <laughs> honestly, they'd be like a cross between silly putty. <laughs> honestly, it'll be fucking like, it'll be the stuff that goes into a pork pie. <laughs> honestly, it will look like the stretched out, rancid offal, the last fucking turkey neck in the butcher shop. And I'll be trying to manipulate it, it'll be falling apart in my hands. So, no, at 87, me masturbating is out of the question. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Merry Christmas. Christmas special. <laughs> yeah. uh, there was another one, but I think we'll finish on that. Uh, yeah. Someone wanted to know if we could take an ugly bath style pic together. Could we? Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Right. Let's well, do you've it. Got, got your phone. Yeah. Well, same chair, I think. I think you've got, got on there. Yeah. And it, unless, actually, a chair's good because it can really squash your. Hold on. What, am I getting on here, am I? Yeah, oh. get, your, get your head, get your head <laughs> remember, I t remember on this I was talking about dignity and shit? <laughs> Fuck I'm sake. I'm getting locked on now. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> Again, from just from being fat and these pr the, the organs were already in my throat. <laughs> like, he lost a kidney, how? He just sicked it up. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, fucking hell. And then a part in question we like to leave people on. on. Um, imagine you're 100 years old. Yeah. You're in a home. Well, you won't be. You'll smacked be... out the head. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> home. Awful just, just all over the place. Just crumbs. The nurse comes in and goes, what's all them crumbs? And they're like, my testicles. <laughs> Fuck off. Hold it Yeah. I'm 100 years old. <laughs> fucking... Uh, nurse! What? Clean up my testicles! <laughs> Clean up my fucking testicles to make grow back. Oh. Right, come on, in a little bit of heroin. Oh, just gosh. dust puffing out the. <laughs> Go on, what was, what was your question, it was, Parkinson? It was a serious, oh. serious question. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, God! It's a serious question. Yeah. No, We're talking about famine. Go on, yeah. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So you're hundred, it's not serious. You're you're a hundred years old. Yeah. You are looking back. You're on. You could you could be on your deathbed. You could be wherever yeah. you want. You're looking back on your career and your life. What was the one moment in which you thought, yeah, I've made it? Has it happened yet? Do you need something else to happen, or is there one? Uh, I, how would you define it? To say because, as I said, all I was ever wanted to do was sort of be happy and do what I want, and I've I've always done that. Even if that was, you know, um, mucking around at school and. 
or then thinking oh, I've got to get my grades because I want to go to university and then joining a band at university and then um, just I don't know always I don't know that I think you could you most people can be happy they just mm. don't realize they can mm. when I had no money because mm. I wanted to be a rock star and I was struggling. I, don't, I was happy because I was trying to be a rock star mm. with no money. Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was happy. Yeah. It, it wasn't about, it's, it, it's about the journey. I don't think it's ever about the, the anger. You don't know when it's finished, mm. you know? I, and I, Is that why you continue to do more and more? Because I enjoy You don't it. have to. I wake like, up every yeah. day and I decide what am I going to do today? Yeah. You know, outside, you know, responsibility, paying your taxes and, yeah. and going to the dentist, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I just think we're only here for, I don't know, well, 100 years apparently. <laughs> um, I won't last 100 years, but that's that's nothing, mm. you know? If we think the universe is like 13.4 billion years old, the mm. Earth's 4.6 billion years old, you know? We're a blip, you know? We're, we're, a, 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 we're a trillions to one shot that we're here at all, and we're not going to exist ever again after this. So you've got to... You've just got to enjoy yourself and not hurt anyone. Mm. And I think then you can't have regrets. You know, I, I don't, there would be, I, I can't imagine. Um, is there one thing that. Uh, I think that's a lovely sentiment. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a great way to finish. I mean, yeah. I suppose deciding if there's one big thing that, you know, mm. um, it was deciding to be a comedian. Yeah, I've, got, that I've made redundant from uh, XFM in like 1998, and mm. I thought, I'm going to do this for a living. I remember waking up in my fact thinking, I'm a comedian now. Mm. I'm going to do, what do I do? And that was lovely. Because mm. that felt um, not only like a big change, but a big second chance. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I never thought at 18, I'd make my big move at 38 or whatever it was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'd say it's never too late. That's That would be my regrets. All the things I thought that were too late. No no point in learning the language. Mm. I'd be fluent now. And at 28, I thought, I learned to play drums. Oh, no, I can't learn to play. I'd be fucking amazing now, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's never, it is never too late. Yeah. The only the only thing it's ever too late to do is when you're lying in bed and you're 87, it's too late to masturbate. Because it wasn't like, <laughs> not even the fucking floor! Nurse, get these fucking bollocks on! <laughs> It was lovely until that moment. <laughs> there, there we go. This has been a Christmas special of the Jack Mate podcast. Tom Norris, thank you very much. Thank you. Ricky Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> There's a real handshake. There we go. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Oh. I'm off for a Scotch egg. Yeah. <laughs> That's a euphemism.